now we go on to the to derive the second law of motion fine now <coughs> let us try to understand a situation let us try to understand a situation where a uh, a car is pushed by car is pushed by two people for for 10 seconds fine then then we find that there will be a change in momentum is it not there will be a change in velocity if there is a change in velocity there will also be a change in momentum is it not why because momentum is nothing but mass into velocity so a car is pushed by two people for sorry for 10 seconds 10 seconds this leads to a change in velocity a change in velocity and hence a change in momentum and hence a change in momentum fine now you understand if if the mass was less if the mass was less the change in velocity would have been the change in velocity would have been more is it not if the mass was less suppose it was there there's a car of say 1000 kg and then there is a car of 500 kg though there are no cars of 500 kg mass but still let's let's assume then then we understand that yes the push will be far easier and maybe it'll it'll gain more speed but what will happen if the mass has gone half the speed will double so that it is the momentum change that will remain a constant that will remain a constant intuitively just try to think is it not the momentum change will remain a constant but here we we do not go into that we have a car of given mass and two people are pushing it for 10 seconds now the same car is pushed by is pushed by four people for for 10 seconds for 10 seconds let us say same car is pushed by four people for 10 seconds what do we expect we expect that the change in momentum will be more four people more force right so the change in momentum will be more than the first case now the same car is pushed by two people for 20 seconds for 20 seconds if 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 the same two people push it for 20 seconds instead of 10 what do we uh, what do we expect we expect the momentum to be momentum change to be more that is velocity will change more 
द चेंज इन मोमेंटम विल बी मोर देन दैट इन द फर्स्ट केस इज इट नॉट नाउ ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड सो द चेंज इन मोमेंटम डिपेंड्स ऑन टू थिंग्स ऑन वॉट टू थिंग्स द फोर्स as well as the time is it not more the force more is the change in momentum more the time more is the change in momentum is it not we understand that this has to be understood very very clearly so we come to the conclusion that does 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 change in momentum momentum is directly proportional to the force and is also directly proportional to the time is directly proportional to the force it's directly proportional to time so what does it mean it means that the change in momentum does therefore change in momentum is directly proportional to force into time is it not the change in momentum is directly proportional to force into time now let there be a body of mass mass m with initial velocity u now uh, this is the general case try to understand it is not essential that the object that you are trying to push is always stationary it may already have some velocity when you started pushing it correct so what happens let there be a body of mass m with initial velocity u u on which a force on which an unbalanced force is applied for t seconds let there be a body of mass m with initial velocity u on which an unbalanced force is applied for t seconds as a result of this let the velocity become v meter per second after a time t right we have been applying it for t seconds so so the velocity was u t and it became v okay and the an unbalanced force f is applied for t seconds fine so we know that what is the initial momentum initial momentum is m u what is my final momentum it is m v correct what is the change in momentum change in momentum see whenever you talk about change and this is a convention 
from now till eternity, whenever, till whatever time you come across this term, whenever you say change in velocity, it is final minus initial. You say change in displacement, final minus initial. Okay, you change in position, final minus initial. Always, all the changes will be final minus initial. So change in momentum is 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 the final momentum, final momentum minus the initial momentum. Correct. Now that is equal to mv minus mu okay and we have just seen that that since change in momentum momentum is directly proportional to the is directly proportional to the force into time is it not is directly proportional to the force into time so what does it mean it means that mv minus mu is directly proportional to ft so ft is directly proportional to mv minus mu now f is directly proportional to mv minus mu upon t now now what happens the moment this proportionality sign goes and an equality comes in a constant of proportionality always drops in fine this is k this k into mv minus mu upon t and what happens is this is do i erase this okay so let me erase this Fine, this is it. From here I am writing here, right? So, F is equal to K, M comes out V minus U upon T. What is V minus U upon T? This is by first law. Hmm? First law of motion tells, first equation of this first equation of motion. Don't confuse it with law of motion. V is equal to U plus A T. So V minus U upon T is A. Is it not? V minus U is A T and no? so V minus U upon T is equal to A. So I write K into M A. Now I'm stuck with a constant of proportionality. Correct? This is the first time I am going to define acceleration. Right? So, 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 so relation between this and this. So, I say, I do not want this actually. I do not want to be carrying a K. Okay? But, but it will look ridiculous. But it is not. Just try to, to try to understand. The force which produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. See, till now, till now, I, I know what mass is, I also understand what acceleration is. So, both these terms are defined till now. So, what I say, I pick up a mass of 1 kg, okay, I keep on applying forces, then the force which produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square on a mass of 
वन के जी ओके इज डिफाइंड एज वन न्यूटन बाय अस ओके वी से फाइन आई आई स्टिल हैव टू नेम इट देर शुड बी देर शुड बी सम मैग्नीट्यूड दैट आई बी इंट्रोड्यूसिंग सो सो आई से फाइन इफ आई पिक अप a 1 kg mass okay and i keep on applying different forces the force which produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square on that that i decide to call 1 newton i could have called it 2 newtons i i can call it 10 newtons i can call it 0.1 newton the choice is entirely mine but to eliminate this and see how it gets eliminated i say 1 i i define it to be 1 no this is we define and is equal to k into m into in place of m this is 1 kg right 1 kg this is we measure we have measured it into 1 meter per second square again we measure no again we measure that so what happens when mass is 1 kg and the force that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square on that i decide to call it 1 so what do i get what do i get i get 1 is equal to k is it not then i get 1 is equal to k so it is 1 is equal to k therefore k is equal to 1 so this equation rather i call this as 1 okay and this as 2 therefore equation 2 becomes what F is equal to m a. F is equal to m a, and that is the Newton's second law of motion. What does it tell us? It tells me that if you apply so much of force on so much of mass, it will give you so much of acceleration. It it relates the force and the mass and the acceleration together. so if any two of them are known the third one automatically gets known right fine so this is newton's second law of motion this is newton's second law of motion okay now what is the unit of force okay unit of force unit of force should be should be unit of mass is it not multiplied by unit of acceleration mass and acceleration they also as as the numbers get multiplied also the units get multiplied so what is the unit so the unit is kg meter per second square now since this all came due to newton we decided to call it a newton okay so this amount 1 kg meter per second square began to be do i erase this no so 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 i i define 1 kg 1 kg meter per second square as 1 newton and 1 newton i denote it as n why capital n whenever you are dealing with names of the scientists the unit is written in capitals fine so that is the second law of motion